A Nintendo 64 known for GoldenEye, Zelda, Ocarina of Time, and Super Smash Bros. A fun retro system with an odd controller, and its thumbstick notoriously goes bad because of poor design. I bought two used controllers and we're easily upgrading the thumbsticks today with GameCube style sticks, and you'll see why. The original sticks had a lot of play and were really loose. It wasn't possible to play games with precision. As you can see, plastic dust residue in the stick from constant wear. The new GameCube style sticks are designed differently and there's no possibility of plastic on plastic friction inside. They are more precise when playing games. There are seven main screws and two smaller screws by the expansion port we need to remove in order to open the shell. This repair and upgrade is actually very easy. There's no soldering involved and the controller isn't very complicated. The Z button board and pad are connected to the bottom of the stick. We remove the three outer screws that mount the stick to the controller. Then carefully unclip the Z button board. Careful not to lose the pad. The wire is easily removed from the connector without any tools. I just use my fingernails. But be careful, you don't want to rip that thing off. Inside the old stick there's tons of plastic dust from many hours of fun. A stick not so far gone could be cleaned, lubricated, and reused. But the GameCube stick's style is much better. Just a little isopropyl alcohol on a toothbrush to clean some light grime. And soon everything will be clean. Let's check the board pads and buttons to see if they need cleaning. The board is spotless, but the pads could use a light clean. And the controller's edges have collected a ton of grime. Yuck! Nasty. We slip the board into place, then the shoulder button boards fit into little channels. Be careful that the pads are also in the channels as well. Make sure the cable fits into its channels. We plug in the brand new stick. Be careful not to bend the pins. Be patient plugging it in as the plug needs to be lifted slightly in the socket to reach the pins. Be sure it's snugly connected. Then let's mount the stick inside the housing with three screws. Be careful not to strip the screw mounts, just snug is enough. Now attach the clean pad to the Z button board and carefully clip it back into place. Then slip the shoulder buttons into place. Make sure the cable is exactly in its channel as the controller shell won't close if the cable isn't just right. Now place the bottom shell back on. Test the buttons before replacing the screws. This saves you time if the pads are slightly off. Then it's screw time. <laughs> well, you can get your mind right out of the gutter, you. Using a magnetized screwdriver will help you place the two skinnier screws in the holes by the expansion port. And of course, just snug. Don't want to strip those holes. Ah, a new thumbstick. Now that's satisfying. Now let's repair the black controller in 10 seconds using the Game Closet Time Warp. Time me, let's see if we get it done. Three, two, one. These controllers need a light cleaning and the cables need a scrub too. Some isopropyl alcohol on a paper towel and a few runs down the cables. We'll have some clean cables in no time. Voila. See? And yuck. They look great. Let's test them out really quick on a couple of games for just a few seconds. Here's Robotron 64. The controller is working great and is very, very precise. I'll do really well now, especially by myself. Here's Road Rash 64. Controlling the bike is great, but I stink at this game as you can see. An easy fix and upgrade for your Nintendo 64 controller. Please hit the like button, subscribe, and share the video. See you in the next video. Thanks for joining me in the Game Closet. Subscribe right now for more cheesy videos in your future. Help the channel out by sharing on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Hit the like button and YouTube will share with more great people like you. See a video you missed? Tap it and watch right now. We will see you soon.